All right, hello everyone. Good to see you, Paul Tranny here. Gonna dive into, uh, well actually, it's a very special, let me actually just remove this, a uh, very special actually Illustrator Masterclass. We're actually taking over the Photoshop Masterclass and we're making this an Illustrator Masterclass today. So just grab that first video, you guys get the idea. Uh, it is good to have you here and uh, hopefully I'm nice and centered in the camera. But let's get this party started, shall we? All right, so this is going to be good. Uh, thank you so much for joining me, Ferry and Sean and Mercurial and everyone. Stacia, happy Friday. What a Friday it is. Hi, huh? got your coffee? Oh, it's, I'm so happy it's Friday, by the way. All right, so uh, let's dive into this. This is sort of what's new uh, in Illustrator as well as an Illustrator Masterclass. So portions of this I did Adobe Ma at Adobe Max, just FYI. Uh, but yeah, it's just like a lot of cool stuff that, um, you know, you should all know about. Uh, good to see you elsewhere as well. Um, join me on behance.net forward slash Adobe live and, uh, we'll dive into this and let me just go ahead and share my screen as you can see right here, uh, a couple new features and I'm going to be going over all this, but I can easily send this link to you as well. So this is the Oct October, 2020 release of illustrator. So. Uh, just make sure you go out to your Creative Cloud uh, desktop app. Here we are, and make sure Illustrator is up to date. Okay, so that is the goal. Yeah, Illustrator fun. It's gonna be fun, right? So uh, you can see the biggest, probably the biggest release is Illustrator uh, available on the iPad. So I am gonna cover that, but I'm gonna start out on the desktop uh, just with some pro tips, things like that. Uh, but we'll get into sort of recoloring artwork, enhanced cloud documents, smart, smart glyph, uh, glyph snapping and enhanced type. Some of these things you actually have to turn on. So uh, be aware of that. And you can see the full detailed summary there. But let's just go ahead and jump into good old uh, Illustrator. Here we are, uh, the latest version, right? So we can kind of take a look at this. Let me actually get some fun colors right up in here. Um, and just so you know, I typically have swatches and uh, symbols and all this stuff kind of already set up with all this these cool elements that I use on a regular basis. And I've talked about this before, but you want to sit, you want to like, honestly, I just want to, you know, draw out something, have a rectangle excuse me, a rectangle or something that has this gradient. I hate making gradients all the time and I always use them. So I wanna make them once and always have them appear. So make sure you are uh, saving your file as a template and then just going with that template. That's what I would do. Um, uh, ooh. Yeah, thank you so much, Samuel. Uh, you're collecting playing cards? I'm like, I've been getting into like playing cards. I just think they're so cool and fascinating and awesome. So that is actually kind of what this is centered around today. But just so you know, this is what I actually do. Uh, file, I'm always going to file new, and you'll notice right in here we have uh, a bunch of a bunch of uh, actual uh, like templates available right in here. Because what are you doing? You're picking letter or an A4 format. Well, look, we have super all these different files that I've made. Everything customized. This is the file that I'm actually working on now. But you can actually start with everything customized and ready to go. And you can have that blank file with all of those elements. So that's what I do. Uh, all you need to do is do a save as, and what you're gonna do is you're gonna save it out to uh, this particular folder. And um, what's the easiest way to show you this? It actually goes in your um, new document profiles. So within your library, application support, feel free to uh, take a snapshot of this, but library, so your name, library application support, Adobe Illustrator 25, whatever version you're using, because this works for other versions, and then put it in new document profile. So that's where I typically start. Okay, cool. Let's move on. Let's even close that. Don't even need that. Let's go right out here. Uh, you worked at a terrible, boring contract job where you, where you uh, were saving Word and Excel templates. Hey, you know, that's one of those things. So, even if you know something, sometimes it's better to say that you don't know it. Like if, if you're a designer at a company and somebody comes to you and says like, hey, do you know PowerPoint? 
just say no. Cause the next thing you know, you're gonna be the PowerPoint designer at that company. So maybe you don't know PowerPoint, all right? Okay, so uh, another thing I'll do is I'll customize the uh, sidebar here as well, all these tools. Cause all too often, do you guys ever click on this? This is just a big problem. It's like, I get rid of some of the stuff that I don't use that much. Perspective grid, like, oh, I accidentally clicked on it. This is so annoying. And then you gotta figure out where the heck, how to turn it off and all that stuff. So I just go in and I uh, hide those. So I'll go ahead and grab the perspective grid and drop it out and maybe some of those tools that I just don't use very much. Get that customized so it works for you uh, and not against you is the goal, okay? Oh, there it is, back on again. So let's just hide that. Uh, you know, I show this a lot, but I'm just gonna kind of talk about shortcuts, right? We have the star. I'm just gonna burn through this really fast. We have this lovely star like so, right? We can vary the uh, spires on that star, right? The points by using the up and down arrows, right? We could also uh, work on the shallowness or depth of those stars as well by holding down the command key. So we can get a, a fun little badge really easily. And you know what? You don't have to go and apply some uh, zigzag filter, right? This is what I want and this is what, uh, this is what I wanna go with. So that's what you could do. Um, you could always, uh, there's additional toggles in here as well. Let's kind of get this back to uh, the original star. Again, we go from sort of a pentagon to an actual star. Another quick tip, I'm gonna hold down the tilde key, which the squiggly line, we can go ahead and draw out and make 50 zillion versions of that star. As you can see right now, all those uh, various, there it is, stars that I made just by holding down the tilde key. So anyways, it's just fun, fun to show, right? There we are, like that. Just shortcuts. Um, a lot of times, uh, yeah, please ask me a question, guys. I'm like, I am here for you, Jamie and K Carol and Viola and Sean and everyone. Uh, also, I did this quick shortcut, right? We know Command H to hide, right? I could have all this stuff selected. Command H will hide those lines. Uh, a lot of times you'll have the artboard. I don't want to show the artboard. I'm in just a brainstorming stage. I'm just having fun with this. Uh, yeah, so there we just want to go again. Com instead of just Command H, you'll just hold down Command Shift H to hide that artboard. And this is kind of how I like to work. Let's get rid of, you can't keep us in a box because we're going to make cool stuff. All right. Uh, let's go on. And on to the next thing that I should probably pull up my notes for. But let's get into some new things. I've just kind of played around. Uh, let's get into some new features, shall we? Kind of working on these playing cards. Okay, I have these like fun designs. I actually need to make the back of the uh, playing cards, but I have a lot of the other stuff already done. But I kind of want to get into type a little bit, okay? Uh, I'm gonna cover something that uh, you should um, know how to do. And, um, and then I'm gonna get into some new features. So here we go, here's my last name. We'll just type this up. Tranny, uh, not that exciting, you know, no big deal. <laughs> um, let's get rid of this one here, right? And what we wanna do is we want to show snap to glyph. So this is what people do. So I have this 1973 and I actually wanna start snapping it to the text, all right? And it's actually already doing that, but let me just turn this off because this is not gonna be on to begin with. So let's just do this. We have this, we have this text down here, right? Uh, I'll select this 1973. Um, let me just kind of open up the properties panel just so you can see, oops. Uh, uh, okay, so we won't worry about any of that right now. But this is what I wanna do, is I actually want to snap this to parts of this text just to rest on this top line, right? It doesn't do that. It'll snap to other things, it'll snap to the baseline, but what about snapping to the X height, right? If that doesn't happen. You have to go into window, and this is brand new, right down here at the bottom, snap to glyph. 
Okay, so that's what we want to turn on. Now with this on, we're going to see these lovely green lines come up. See that green line? Green line says, hey, you know what? You are now snapping to the X height of this line, right? Which is what I'll do a lot. Same thing right up here. We want to maybe rest on top of the T. We don't have to drag out a million guides because that's what we would do in the past. But we could see that glyph bound, as it's known, as I drag this around. See how this snaps to the different elements uh, of this. Look at that, even to the eye right there, boom, boom, you get the idea. I kind of wanted to snap it to the bottom right here, um, the baseline, something like that. We have that capability. That's all. Uh, no, glyph refers to numbers as well. So that's why I'm actually using numbers here. But yeah, if there was a, you know, if there was a, you know, you know, if this was 73, it's going to work the same. So yeah. Same, same thing, it's gonna be fine, okay? Uh, this works like regardless of the font. I know I have a pretty straightforward font, but if you go in and start to change the font, let's go to this font, for instance, and do this glyph snapping. Wait for it. Right, we can see it snap to this baseline. Uh, hopefully snap to the top. I was hoping it would actually snap to the top of this. It'll snap to the top of this this letter as well. So it does snap, and there it is, snapping to uh, the baseline right there as well. So just kind of having some fun with this. Cool, let's move on. Uh, is there a new Illustrator keyboard shortcut cheat sheet? Uh, not that I'm aware of, because uh, you don't need it. It's pretty much the same shortcuts we've been using for years. I'm um, just kind of pointing out, you know, a couple that, uh, that I would use. You know, speaking of shortcuts, by the way, let's turn off some of this other stuff. You know, you, you all know that you could easily kind of take this and uh, click and drag it out just by holding on the, the option, shift will duplicate, op shift, option, option will duplicate, option shift constrains, command D, that will start to have this duplicate along a line, we all know that, right? We all know that it can do that. We can also do that around a sphere, okay? So you're thinking, oh, you could do this. What if I wanted to have stars kind of travel around a circle? How would we do that? A couple different ways you could do that. Actually, uh, an easy way to do that is take this object and let's just change the color. Let's make it red, right? And then we'll go in here too. And again, this has been around since Illustrator 88. Rotate tool, selecting that rotate tool, clicking right down there below, bah, right there. Oops, hold down the option. Oh, let's do that again. <laughs> uh, redo, bring me back my red. There we go, we'll come down here. We will option click. If you option click, you can say, hey, you know what? We're gonna rotate this object uh, around the center point. But what I wanna actually do is I wanna copy it. In fact, I wanna rotate around that center point every, uh, 45 degrees, okay, just like that. And again, we wanna copy it. Boom, there it is. Command D, 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 D. Now everything's perfectly traveling around uh, that, um, that circle. Cool, let me know if you have questions. Is there an automatic evaluation program in the program like InDesign? Um, there is there's not a, uh, what you're talking about is like pre-flight. Um, there's no pre-flight. Uh, I don't know what that would look like, um, but there, it's, you could say it's not needed, but you know, it will warn you if there are broken links and things like that, at least Illustrator will. All right. All right, check it out. Thank you so much for the default keyboard shortcuts. Thank you for posting that. I appreciate it. Let me just zoom out there so I can read a few more of these comments a little easier, hopefully. Come on, buddy. There it is. There it is. Okay. Something like that. Okay, new messages. Boom. Let's move on. Uh, here's another good tip, because let's say, for instance, um, I decide I want a pentagram. I know. Don't freak out. But the thing is, is like this, I want to be my new shape. It really bothers me when this bounding box is set at an angle. It's very weird. I'm just like, no, just make it uh, square, like at right angles. 
because it's gonna be easier to work it with going forward, right? And I'll just actually make this a little bit more exact. Kind of like that. Uh, but right up here, again, these are pro tips. We'll go to transform, right up here, transform, reset bounding box. So when we do that, watch what happens. Bingo. Oh, thank you so much. It actually will make that bounding box just like this. It's just gonna be easier to work with. So I like that a lot. Let's move on. Shabin, good to see you. Muriel, everyone. Uh, Fly like an eagle, Reverb Mike says. Go for it. Thank you, Wade, for posting that as well. Uh, let's move on. I actually need to probably pull up my <laughs> stuff, my notes. How about I have my, my actually my notes up? There we go. There we go. All right. Uh, let's do this as well. I've done duplicate and repeat. Uh, we could do dash lines and do this sometimes as well. Like if we take a circle, you know, instead of a star, let's say we want to have a, um, you know, a, a radial burst out from the center, something like that. You might think that you might do that same process, which is, uh, you know, rotate, you know, copy paste, you know, rotate, you know, you want it to kind of be, I'm, I want to create a cool burst. Does that make sense? It's all coming kind of from the center, right? And uh, I could do this sort of manually. I could use the rotate tool. But what I actually want to do is I'm going to go ahead and grab a circle, draw out a circle. There it is. That's going to have just a red stroke. And then we can go into the properties of the stroke. So now if we take a look at the stroke, we can make this a dashed line, right? Once we make this a dashed line, we can increase the size. So let's increase the size by say, uh, 16, right? You could see that we're making that burst, right? We want to make the dash uh, more of a gap. So watch what happens here. We'll take this down to 10, right? And uh, let's make the gap 10. Actually, let's make it like five, right? You see what's happening here. I can adjust this accordingly and have like more bursts or less bursts. And all I'm doing is that's just a, a dashed line that now all of a sudden is a burst that I can control at any point, which is nice. Um, yeah, how to cut a straight line with a knife. I would actually use a uh, circle. So let's just do this really fast. It's still gonna give me that. Let's just reset this. Give me one second. Appearance. Uh, new, uh, let's just clear appearance. That's all I'm doing there, by the way. Um, yeah, you wouldn't use the knife for that is what it comes down to, right? You could probably use the scissors tool or you could just create a simple line that cuts this circle. This line happens to be, uh, you know, like that. That's way too thick, but you get the idea. So uh, that's what I would do is I would go ahead and do this and I would go ahead and just do sort of minus front is what you can do there. And it will go ahead and minus the front. Another thing you could do if you're doing any of this, and let me actually outline this stroke or expand it. Um, check this out. This is really cool. So I'm going to do this. Another pro tip, selecting these two objects. We'll go down here to my Pathfinder. Let's just kind of hide everything else. Pathfinder, typically, you would just kind of remove the front. But like, what if it's off? You're like, oh no, it's off a little bit. Like it's not quite in the center. Well, you typically have to undo or whatever, but check this out. We can hold on the option key and it actually pops up here. Alt key or option key, click to create a compound shape. So we click right there and now it's uh, an editable shape. So now we can actually go inside of it and now you can see we can kind of move that around. Okay, so that's a way of using Pathfinder non-destructively by selecting using the Alt or um, uh, Alt key or the option key. I always call it the option key because I'm on a Mac. Okay, let's move on my friends. Robzilla, good to have you here. Uh, yeah, Shashir, you're too funny. Okay, let's get into cooler stuff, man. I'm just, I just want to have some fun, shall we? Shall we do that, Rob? Let's just have a good time, huh? Oh man, look at that. Let's turn on. I got some other stuff in here. All right, let me get back to kind of where I was, huh? Let's get back to where I was, right in here. First off, with this text, this is what people do. It's like, oh, it'd be really cool with this text if it had like an outline to it, 
right? It has this outline, but um, I'm noticing that uh, it's pretty, <laughs> this is the problem. Anytime you add a stroke and you use cursive or fonts that run together, you have this weird overlap. So what people will do is they'll break it apart. They'll like expand it, they'll create outlines is what they'll do. Um, and then they can't edit it and you don't need to do that. So um, what I would do, let me actually get my swatches squared away. I really wish my screen was not this small, but here's that lovely red. Okay, I want this red to be on top. I wanna to hide this junk. Go to the appearance panel, okay? Right in here, for the appearance panel, this is where you can actually add uh, a new stroke or a new fill. So let's add a new fill on top of that. Let's make it that red, for instance. And now you can see that it does cover up that weird stroke. Now I could always fix that stroke, by the way, that I had, um, you know, either adding a new stroke right here or just making sure, the stroke, making sure the stroke is on the outside, right? But as you can see, this is actually a good example of how stacking works. Because the reason this stroke, this black stroke's on top is because it's on top of the fill, right? So we just take that, we drag it underneath, and then it goes away. So I can still have that stroke, whatever size I want as I increase its size. But the key thing is I um, obviously um, have that text running together and everything looking nice. Right from there, what would you do? You'd throw some graphic styles on it, right? Let's throw a graphic style on it, bam, there it is. Now, this brings me to my next point. You guys ready for this? Uh, uh, oh yeah, you can use, sh so Shape Builder again, you're gonna be breaking apart your text. It's no longer gonna be editable. Even right here, uh, if I happen to misspell my own name, I can go ahead and fix it, right? So, uh, but this is a situation that happens. You'll apply something and it's gonna be way too thick or too big because these graphic styles were made just larger or smaller. It's like a whole thing. So how do you fix that? How do you make that smaller so it actually looks like this little thumbnail? Well, this is how you do that, right? You could go into the appearance panel and you could change all this stuff and cut everything in half, but no, man, I'm here to make your life easier, right? We could take this, we scale it up, right? When we scale it up, it's like, oh, okay, this is the, and we still have some overlap issues in this one, but this is more the size that, this is appropriate, but it doesn't fit within my layout. So you scale it up. So this is what you do. We'll go into general. You're gonna do this. You're gonna not scale the stroke and effects. You scale it up and then you turn this back on because now you wanna scale the stroke and effects with the text as you scale it back down. When I do that, oh, that's so much better than the way it looked before, right? And, and disre disregard those strokes. I need to, um, again, to fix that, what I would do is I'd take these and make sure they're underneath. Wait for it, wait for it, my friends. Bop, bop. Underneath, it's just a stacking issue right like that. So, but now we have the lines at the right size. Everything is editable text. Some people don't might, might call me Tran. It's fine. We can just go ahead and eliminate that. Do what you need to. So again, I think that's kind of cool. Pro tips is what it's all about. Just duplicate the top layer and turn off the stroke. So if you, I don't know if you mean actually duplicating text, but we still don't want to have two text objects that we have to worry about because then it's just going to be a mess. The fact that this is one unit makes it just a very nice, elegant solution in my, uh, my personal opinion. That's right. No dupe. Thank you, Anne. Oh, Anne, it's good to see you. So I love, I love this. I love that you're here. <laughs> Uh, I really need to fix this text because this is not what I'm going for for the design, by the way, just so you know. I kind of want to get somebody into that's cooler. Do you mind? Do you mind if I just take a second? Uh, I am about 25 minutes in and I think you'll, you'll hopefully it's okay <laughs> that we just change this to, I want to do something kind of like this. I think this is like cooler. And uh, honestly, I don't even want those text effects. You know, as you as you grow as a designer, like sometimes like less is more. So I can just get rid of all that stuff. If I don't want all that stuff right in here, guess what? Clear appearance. Boom, get rid of all that stuff. And now it's back. It's nice, I love this font. And 
Again, we just kind of play with this a little bit as well. All right, there we go. I'm gonna do something like this. By the way, like, so don't tell my family. <laughs> uh, uh, Michelle, you gotta go. Thanks for hanging out. Uh, my, my goal is to actually make playing cards for my family that's gonna, you know, be all my various, like, family members on different cards. But it's gonna take a lot longer than I thought. So that's, that's kind of what I'm working on. Okay, so I have this here. Let's bring back the cards. I'm making the back of the card. Uh, we've gone over some features. I'm gonna go over a lot more uh, in a second. In fact, let's, let's do this really fast. I have this. Um, and this is actually what I would do, and I would probably have a couple different versions of this. You know, if it's gonna be the back of a card, it doesn't need to have all this text on it. I would just do something like that. Uh, but what I think would be cool is to like, have some cool um, vines and, and things like this. This is what I want. I want this level of detail over there, okay? So we could take a look at this. Over here, I want that same level of detail, right? Um, I could go ahead and design a, um, these elements like I did right here. But what I would typically do in this case is rather than taking this and bringing it down and, you know, thinking I'm smart by using the, wait for it. Uh, sorry, sometimes I have to find these things as well. Puppet warp, yeah, so there it is. I could use the puppet warp, right? Some people will do that. Oh, it's like, oh, I'm pretty smart. I got this. I drew out this little branch and now I could use puppet warp to kind of pull this, you know, and that could work. Like that could work for this project, right? As I start to bring this down, it might start to break apart a little bit, but if I want to do this a lot of times, rather than just duplicating this and readjusting it, what I would do is I would actually um, turn this into a brush. So right up here, we take these elements, okay? We have these elements. We'll open up our brushes. Here's our lovely brushes. Uh, oh yeah, so yeah, Cordell, no Photoshop Masterclass today. It's an Illustrator, it's a very special Illustrator Masterclass because we did a Photoshop Masterclass of new features last week. Okay, so that being said, right over here, what do we do? We just drag this into the brushes panel and we can create an art brush or a pattern brush. Uh, Dana Pride, I don't know if she's here, but she was asking me uh, like the difference and we can cover the difference. The pattern brush is gonna give you a pattern, right? So that's what it me it's meant by pattern. It's gonna go ahead and duplicate that all the way around and then you determine how the corners uh, react. So right over here, we could say, hey, you know what? Do an auto between for the corners, right? That's what I want there. And uh, what I'd want in here, right? is I wanna determine what's the head and the tail. But already I made a brush right down here. So I can, even with that much done, hit N for pencil, select that brush, and then draw out, hello, select that, and then draw that out like so, okay? I can still manipulate this and have it small, um, you know, uh, taper at the beginning and the end, and I think this works out pretty well as well. And it's cool, I can come in and adjust this. You know, it's a, we get it, it's a, it's a line. We get it, Paul, right? We, we've been working in Illustrator for years, right? But it's cool that this is a brush and now I can kind of make this part of my design. But then you get a little bit more advanced. And again, this is not anything new, but it is pro tips because we get into the details of all of this. But right in here, what do we have? You can make a pattern. So it's a pattern brush. So you need a pattern swatch for the flower itself and the, the end root. So we have rows and then root. And all I did, by the way, is just drag that in there. Take this element, drag it in there, and there's your new pattern. So that's what you do. You're like, hey, that's what I want. You can, um, you can uh, go in and edit that current one, by the way. If you just double click, you can go ahead and add those. So that's what I do at this point. Scroll down. There's my new pattern swatch. Oh, I always do that. I made that the wrong end. It needs to be root. 
and then rows. Like that, there we are. Click OK. Apply to strokes, right? Because watch, it's gonna modify this one right down here. Apply to strokes, and there it is, right? We have our lovely, oops, our lovely flower. Okay. Uh, yes, exactly, That's how, Rob, yeah, exactly. That's how you could make gold chains. Which, did you know that you could do this exact same thing in Photoshop? So I've shown that before, but it's really cool that you can actually have the element rotate. You can make chains in Photoshop. I just thought that was kind of cool. But why do I like Illustrator? Is because we always go back in and modify this. Let's send this to the back. Might be on a different layer, that's okay. Yeah, it is. All right, so let's just bring it up here. Okay, so there it is. Um, by the way, so as I start to draw this out, right, I'll hit N for pencil, and I'm, I want to have another uh, brush off to the side, right? Uh, another rose. I want to have a rose up here. It's like, oh, I draw out that line, and you're kidding me? I have to go in and select this each time, right? Is that what I have to do? And by the way, I'm going to double click on this. Since I want this to be half the size, I'm going to take this down, maybe 56. Apply to strokes, there we go. I want it more this size, okay? So I just globally resized. Again, another reason why I'd wanna use Illustrator. But that's what I'd have to do. Do I really have to do that if I want to have a, a flower over here, like a rose on that path? I gotta select it each time and I gotta draw and then I gotta select it? No, you don't have to do that at all. In fact, I'll undo these. Let's get rid of that, let's get rid of that. Because right in here, appearance panel is my best friend, right? Because you can see I'm, I'm awfully lonely. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I'm, so, I'm so lonely. <laughs> the appearance panel is my, be my best friend. <laughs> that was just the saddest statement. Uh, it's not really. I just like it. Okay, new art has basic appearance. So each time we draw a line, it breaks it back down to a basic black stroke. Every single time. I turn that off. I turn it off. Now what it's gonna do, it's gonna say, hey, the last line that you used is now gonna be used anytime you draw. So you don't even need to worry about that panel. So let's make this full size like so. And actually, can I not escape? Anyways, I, I, could wor I don't have to worry about what's around it. I don't have to select anything else. I just seriously use the uh, pencil and draw that rose out and draw another one down here and another one over here, and you get the idea. And I just start to have fun with this. That's all. That's all I got for you. But there's more. I just love, uh, love brushes, right? Uh, if we decide that we want to make something an art brush, by the way, so I could take this for instance, here's our other rose. This rose has the same problem. Look, this rose, the lines are a different thickness. How would we fix that? Hey, we already learned how, right? We select this, we go into our preferences. Uh, actually, all I do is I scale it up. Scale it up. Uh, whatever you do, you just need to do the opposite when you scale it back down. So it doesn't really matter, to be honest with you. But now I'm not gonna scale this. Oh no, it does matter actually. I'm, a, I'm an idiot. <laughs> you scale it down. Let's take a look. Let me see what happens if I scale this down because I don't remember what I left my setting at. Okay, so it's scaling down the stroke and effects. I would scale it down like this. There it is. And then we wanna go ahead and do not scale strokes and effects. Now when I scale it back up, you could see it doesn't scale up those strokes and effects. So it's just a matter of toggling that. That's all I got for you. You get the idea. You can scale it up some more. But nonetheless, let's rotate this really fast. I'm gonna do this, take two seconds, right? Drag it in here, boom. It's gonna be an art brush, click OK. Here's my art brush. What does the art brush do? The art brush stretches the element. It doesn't duplicate, it doesn't give you any sort of pattern, it just stretches whatever is in there, and that's it. So that's what I could do. There's my fun stretched out, all my stretched out items, but my stretched out rows. So that's what an art brush is. And uh, that's all you need to know, right? There it is, stretching it out like so. Cool. 
Ah. Uh, yeah, I've made, yeah, that's it. I've made snakes before. By the way, the reason I started with that, the starter file is because honestly, I only want to make the snake once, right? Or whatever it is right over here. Here's my snake. I can select it and there it is. So I always love having the starter file allows me to change this to any of these other elements that I've made in the past. Cause the last thing I want to do is have to, um, you know, make them again, obviously, right? Cool. All right, everybody, welcome. If you're new here, feel free to say hello. Uh, yeah, imagine an Illustrator version where you just imagine something and an Illustrator does that automatically in a few seconds. You're in the future, my friend. All right, this is just a fun hand one. By the way, let me point this out. Why is the hand gray? Well, let's change the color of the stroke. Oh, look, I can change the color of the hand. That's because within each one of these, it has tints and shades. So tint it uh, whatever color that you have for your stroke. So that means you can have multiple hands all with like different colors, but they're all pointing back to the same, uh, the same element. And I think that's kind of cool, right? Cool. Let's move on. Uh, let me go to our cards and get into some advanced stuff. Let me get into, actually, let's check out all these lovely cards. Some of this, there they are. Here's the lovely cards that I've made. I actually made these in Illustrator on the iPad. But I want to do something really fast. Let's jump out there. Let's uh, playing cards. King of hearts, why not? Let's just find an old card. I wanna just kind of take a different, uh, take a look at the different color palettes that people have used for cards. Um, especially some of these old ones, you know? Give me one second. Let's do old, let's do vintage. That's what we need. Or old, something like that. There we go. Oh, look at this. Isn't this awesome? Look at this, this is so cool. Right, we're just gonna we're just gonna copy this image. We're just gonna sample the colors, pasting it in Illustrator, scaling that down. Right, and uh, we'll steal colors from it. It might not change that much, which is why I have different cards up here and excuse me, different images. Right, but let's take a look. There's the card that I just pulled in, right? And I can say, hey, you know what? Match all the other cards to this card. Like steal those colors, right? So that's what I'm gonna do right now. We will do it just say with these first uh, three, for instance, right? So we'll select all of these, king, queen, and jack. And then we'll go to edit colors, recolor artwork, okay? Now gives me this lovely color wheel that we're familiar with, but now I want to go to color theme picker. And then I'm going to pick that card that I just had selected. First off, it has a true, it has a, a, almost a true red in there. So there might not be a lot of shift, but let's go ahead and click and see what happens. See, there it goes. It went ahead and it made the shift. See how it kind of made it look more washed out, right? And we can see what it did up here. Took those original colors and applied them to all uh, the cards, as you can see right back there as well. So hopefully that makes sense. I can go and click on this image. And we can see them change all based on this image that I had selected, okay? We can, and by the way, did you notice, did you see that notification that says, hey, you know what? You can click and drag to select sort of multiple colors if you want. And this is where it gets interesting, honestly, is because these colors are different I really like what it did in here. Like it took this, uh, these colors and applied it to this card and just kind of made it uh, pretty interesting. We'll do the one more with this and you guys get the idea. So this is a way to um, uh, recolor artwork. You could always reset it and you could also go into advanced options. And this is what we're used to when it comes to colorizing. Uh, and you can see all these colors, obviously lock those down and then, oops, sorry, lock those down and then manipulate accordingly. You get the idea. Cool. Uh, they made it cooler. I like it. 
I like it. Reverb mic in the house. We can make them gray. Hey, why not? Let's get out of there. Okay. That's what we've done. Re recolored artwork. We've gone through uh, smart glyph snapping, enhanced type. That's one thing you'll notice if you're dealing with paragraph text. And not that I have any here, but let's kind of drop in a text box. And uh, take this down. Oh, by the way, here's, let me show you a couple of new features with text. So we have different sizing for text. We have mbox cap height is gonna be the cap height and the x height as well. So you're gonna have these different measurements and you notice how it's gonna change right below here. So it's gonna change it to cap height, right? ICF box, I don't know what ICF is and I need to learn because I should know that. But you have different sizes and you'll see how that changes based on mbox, cap height and the like. Uh, from there, if this happens to be say 12 point text and I P S U M M. Ah, oh, darn it. Darn it, folks. I don't have, let's just take some text in here somewhere. There we go. Pasting in this text. I just want to show you this right down here. Uh, area type is now available as well. So see how I have this set, of course, to the top, we can have it centered, we can have it bottom, and then this last one is to vertically justify it as well. So that's gonna space it out. But these are new area type options that you have. Now let's move on, okay? Uh, uh, Anthony, can you explain these in detail? I might've missed the question. Feel free to throw it at me again if I missed it. I'm so sorry. Uh, Can you make your custom art brushes in Illustrator? Yes, you can, Fury. I uh, just kind of covered that, by the way. Uh, making custom brushes, made a pattern brush, and that's how we made all these lovely roses. And that's honestly how I would do a lot of this stuff that you see, right? If we, uh, actually, no, that's not how, I'll show you how these were created. These actually were created on the iPad. So I think it's time that I shift over now that I uh, don't have a ton of time but let's kind of shift over and have some fun creating, shall we? Let's just have some fun, guys. I'll switch over in a second. Let me just uh, hide that. Turn on a new layer. Let's switch over, shall we? Come on now, do your thing. There we are. Here I am on my iPad. Okay. Okay, so uh, first off, let's just close this file. Um, I have a couple different accounts, by the way, so like I don't actually know if the cards are in here. So the cards are not linked with this account currently, but trust me, that's how I made these cards. Um, yeah, everything except for like, I did the probably the last 10% on the desktop, but let's just kind of go into uh, just a new file. This is an Illustrator file, just so you know, and we can start creating. Um, and uh, create something kind of like that because I actually, they have skulls in them. So I'm just gonna make like a quick skull if you don't mind. I'll pick my colors, pick my stroke, right? And uh, then just kind of be aware of that. Make sure I'm on the right layer. And then I can start kind of drawing. And I'm just gonna kind of draw. And by the way, I'm using the pencil, right? So just using a standard pencil. And I have the smoothing, it's kind of by my head right here. I have it set to kind of the middle, okay? And it's totally up to you, but I'm gonna need some of that detail, which is why I have it in the middle. A lot of times I just have the smoothing all the way up, right? But right in here, we can just kind of draw and just bear with me. As you can kind of see how this line works, I have some, some ridges, not too many, but you can see how that line bends as I bring this up. And I'm just gonna make this like one shape. We're gonna do like the profile of a skull and connect it like so. Okay, so I could continue to do that. I'm gonna up the stroke size, right? Bring it up to five point and the caps, we're gonna round them just like that. Cause that's typically what I wanna do for most of this. As I start to bring in the nose, you know, the eye is gonna be like that. We're gonna have the sort of like the, um, your, uh, I don't even know what that's called. This like, this bone right here under, underneath your eye. But that's what I'm drawing right now. And we can get these nice smooth lines. So that's all I'm making at this point. Let's just make some nice smooth lines like so. Connecting those. So if I ever want to connect a line a little bit further, right? So even if this one is selected, right? I can select my pencil tool 
and I can continue to draw that up and it's gonna have that selected. Same thing for this one, right? I could select that, continue with the uh, pencil and kind of come in and connect those lines. For that, flip those, there's the dark part of that eye. And I would continue on that way, but I just like how smooth this line is. I could always flip that. Again, I, there's no um, uh, saving of settings because I kind of would like that because if I always am using like a, a line that's five point, I kind of want to keep that. So I'm gonna do this really fast, folks. Uh, this one I want to have, boom. Let's make the teeth fast. There we go, let's make these teeth. Trying to go as fast as possible, people. But just to give you an idea of how this all works. And then we'll get into the depth that's happening, right? Because there's some depth issues here, right? Like that. Uh, for instance, right here, this tooth, I want it to be in front of everything else. We get this little heads up display. So let me just zoom in on this really fast. Go back over here. Bah and then drag up, and I'm sorry I can't zoom into this anymore, but it's actually right here. So this is my stacking order, right? If I expand this out, you'll see, oh, here's all the shapes that I've drawn. But I could drag this up, ba 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 ba, and now all of a sudden it's at the top of my uh, layer order. Um, so uh, that's kind of what I wanna work on if I have any sort of stacking issues. Just drag it up, take this one, like drag it up, that one, uh, yeah, let's make sure that one's on the top as well, right? So there's our lovely skull. It still needs like a lot of work, but that's how I'd start to draw in these lines. If I happen to mess up, let's just like draw some lines in here. It's like, oh, uh, this one, little screwed up. Look at that, double click inside of it. This point, look at all the, there's like four points in here. Let's see if we can get this down to two points the start and the end, which is the maximum you can have for a line and still be a line. So I'll select that point right in the center. I'll go to this little um, heads up display off to the side over there. And I'm gonna click the X that's right next to the trash can. It removes that point, but it maintains the curve. Let's try to try that with this one right here. Boom, there we go. We have something very close to the original shape. And now it's only, it's, ha it's cut in half, half of the points that we had before. Um, so I think that was pretty cool. I have about 10 minutes. Um, uh, Laura, yeah, I can't, I can't quite understand what you're saying there, or what, you, what that is. Um, okay, so does it work uh, with elements, not with very elaborate work with several artboards? Um, it, so this is my two cents on that. This is like a 1.0 product right now. I would not rely on this heavily for your heavy lifting for big projects. So what I did is I would create my cards in here and then um, end up on my desktop to have all the elaborate artboards. But to answer your question, yes, I can take this and I'm gonna do that right now, switching back over really fast. By the way, just so you know, we'll take this, we'll do a save as, we'll call this, we'll say this is a cloud document and these will be my cards. Right, that's what we'll do, save my card. So that's actually gonna be available. We'll open it up. It should come over just fine. Um, and yeah, it should be good. If you're just joining me, by the way, this is Illustrator on the iPad with flowers. Let's make a flower. Let's do this really fast, guys. I'm gonna hustle through this. There we are. Go, Paul, hurry. Hurry, then. you know, maybe we will. Tweak it a little bit. Selecting all of these, right, we'll go to my repeat options. And now we have our radial repeat. So here is my, and draw out a nice little, right? And by the way, let's go ahead. This is a repeating element. Uh, I'll group it together. Don't even have to group it together, by the way. But now we can repeat this some more. So let's do a radial repeat of this, right? So now we have this. Uh, All right, uh, let me know if you have uh, questions, just kind of looking through things. That's the repeat grid. There's more we can do, obviously, even with text, by the way. Uh, let's, let's actually go to that previous file. I hope it doesn't take forever to open. Oh, there it is. So here it is, the cards that I was working on. Boom, we can open that up and work on it. Okay, 
So this may take longer on Slower's connections, but it's gonna open it up. Uh, you could actually download it even if you're not gonna work on it. So that's the short of it. Um, hopefully if anybody's having buffering issues, uh, everything looks good on my end. And let's just let's just check with the uh, check with headquarters. So here it is. Uh, yeah, it looks like two minutes ago there might have been a little uh, blip. Uh, and my shirt really doesn't say anything. It's just there you go. It's just a, a popsicle. That's all. So here it is. Look at this. Oh, this is so nice. These were originally created, by the way, and I should should have really opened up the original, but you can see this is actually a repeating element right here, right? Uh, these dashed lines, guess what? They're just as expected, dashed lines with gaps in them, right? That we could always kind of change. Da -da -da, da -da -da. See those lines move? Like that, same thing for the necklace. Yeah. Little bling there, huh? You guys get the idea. These flowers are actually, um, they were repeating elements as well. They're in the background, okay? Cool, cool. So a lot you could do. I didn't even get into the text, but guess what? Remember how I picked that font? It actually synced that font and then I can continue to work on it. Now, keep in mind, here's a couple things. Uh, this does come through, if we take a look, this line does come through as a stroke, but um, let's see, yeah. So the strokes will come through, but which is great. It doesn't outline these strokes, but you don't have pattern, uh, you can't make uh, pattern brushes. So the brushes come through, um, but you can't like use them some more unless you actually duplicate it. So I could actually take this and duplicate it and then manipulate it, but I would have to create this on the desktop first. So there are some features that are not available just yet that old thing right okay so yeah is that not cool by the way look at all these artboards let me just kind of zoom out here's all the artboards there should be uh 52 different artboards in here right and uh, a lot of complex graphics right in here as well so illustrator on the ipad i have too much fun uh drawing in it just so you know i i move on i'm going to show you the last last feature that you're absolutely going to love and i'm going to go oh shoot to my desktop. Sorry, looks like I'm having some buffering issues. I wanted to show you this really fast. You ready for this? This is gonna blow your mind. Ah, sorry. Ah, ah, there we are. Okay, so here's all these cards. You ready for this? Hopefully I can get this done in time. I want to change this suit. Let's do this. Uh, spades. Okay, so I want to change all of these diamonds into clubs. So what do I do? I go over here, and by the way, for the whole row, I will do a start global edit. Right, start global edit. It selects it everywhere, and then I can paste in this object and replace that diamond like I'm doing right now, okay? Let's zoom out. And done. Are you not impressed? I did a start global edit. I did a global search and replace. I replaced all those diamonds with spades because all I did is select it and I did a start global edit. So do that and it's amazing. If you wanna do a global delete, by the way, cause I've ran into other things I don't have time for. <laughs> um, I ran into this issue where all these, all these spades are hidden right here. I'm like, how did, how did this spade end up right here? Do you guys see that? That's an issue. Well, guess what? We can do a start global edit, edit to do a global find and replace if we want to. So start global edit, it finds them all, and then I can just delete them. So a global search and delete, and that's done. And so am I. Thanks so much for hanging out with me. Uh, I'm gonna turn it over to Jason. 
I had too much fun here. Didn't even go through outputting, but I can output these in the blink of an eye uh, now that they're set up and all that fun stuff. So hopefully you enjoyed this. Uh, appreciate you guys, Shahir and Cornell and Reverb Mike, Cal. How you doing, Cal? Yoshiko, Anna, and everyone. Thanks so much. Uh, yeah, follow me on all the social medias, and uh, we'll be in touch. I'll turn it over to Jason. Thanks so much, everybody. Bye.